Writing in the Boston Public Library had clearly been a mistake. It was just too magnificent. One could spend hours just staring at the ceiling in the reading room. Very few books have been written with the writer's eyes cast upwards, mind you. It judged you, that ceiling, looked down on you, in every way mocked you with an architectural perfection that could not be achieved by simply placing one word after another until a structure took shape. It made you want to start with grand arcs to build a magnificent framework into which the artistic detail would be written a thing of vision and symmetry and cohesion. But that, sadly, is not the way I write. I am basically a bricklayer, without drawings, laying words into sentences, sentences into paragraphs, allowing my walls to twist and turn on whim. There's no framework, just bricks interlocked to support each other, hopefully into a story. I have no idea of what I'm actually building, or if it will even stand when I'm done. Maybe I should be working on a city bus. That would be more consistent with my process, such as it is. I'm not totally without direction. There is a route of some sort, but who hops on and who gets off is determined by a balance of habit and timing and random chance. There is always the possibility that the route will be altered at the last minute for weather or accident, some parade or marathon. There's no symmetry, there's no plan, just the chaotic, unplotted bustle of human life. Still, ceilings have a wonderful lofty perspective that buses, of course, do not. Ceilings have gazed down on writers before, for centuries. Do they see one now, I wonder, or just a woman in the library with a blank page before her? The ornate reading room at the Boston Public Library is quiet, until the tranquility is shattered by a woman's terrified scream. Security guards take charge immediately, instructing everyone inside to stay put until the threat is identified and contained. While they wait for the all-clear, four strangers, who'd happened to sit at the same table, pass the time in conversation and strike up friendships. Each has his or her own reasons for being in the reading room that morning. It just happens that one is a murderer. Award-winning author Sulara Gentile delivers a sharply thrilling read with The Woman in the Library, an unexpectedly twisty literary adventure that examines the complicated nature of friendship and shows us that words can be the most treacherous weapons of all. <laughs>